Yes, sir. Fantastic. And clear. Okay, let's uh, let's get it rolling, and we'll uh, go ahead and start taking questions here. And uh, as usual, in the leadoff position, we got Jonathan Shop. Go ahead, Jonathan. Hey, Jaden. When you look back at this point to that Nebraska game, specifically the punt return, it kind of looked like a launching point for the season. I know it's been a while, but when you look back at that play now, uh, can you describe it for us and also what your team took from that play and the finish of that game to apply the rest of the year? Um, you know, that that's, you know, one of the biggest plays I've made in my career. So, you know, I, I, I take pride in that, that play. And, uh, you know, I couldn't have done it without my teammates that were out there w with me. So, you know, I also appreciate my teammates for, you know, executing the play and everything like that for me to be able to, you know, make that happen. All right, we'll go next to Stephen Brooks. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Jaden, can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Loud okay, and clear. great. Uh, I want to ask you a couple of things about Kenneth, if I could. Just how would you describe no the, the team-wide reaction to, to him not playing? And, and what do you sort of think his legacy is, you know, uh, leaving after one year and what he did for you guys uh, in this season? Uh, no doubt. I mean, words can't describe, you know, how much we appreciate Ken, you know, for coming here this year and, you know, uh, displaying that kind of talent out there. And, you know, he, he's helped us tremendously. Um, so, you know, it's obviously been different, you know, uh, more than a player, you know, but the person he is, you know, we, we miss that the aspect of having him around, you know, just to have a good team spirit, you know, with, with that guy in, in the room. So, you know, that's that's more of the issue, you know, um, him not being around as a person more than a player, you know what I'm saying? He's a much better person than player he is, you know. So we, we definitely miss that and miss having him around. What about the guys you guys will be looking at to sort of replace him? How have they looked for you this past month or so? Um, they're attacking it. You know, our coaches hound us, and, you know, they coach us the right way. And, you know, all of us, you know, they always coach us that next man up. You got to be ready no matter what. Thank you. So, all right, we'll go next to Graham Couch. Go ahead, Graham. Yeah, um, Jaden, wanted to ask you about um, Peyton Thorne and what you've seen from him from, and obviously you, you've practiced with him for, for years and all that stuff, but I'm wondering from the beginning of this season until now, where are you seeing growth and how is he uh, a different quarterback than he was at the beginning of the year? Oh. Um. I think it's pretty much been the same thing, you know, the entire time. His leadership, you know, his leadership has been, you know, going up a level every game, every week. So he's been stepping up, being a, a much be bigger and better leader. You know, he's being more vocal as the team. You know, that that um, that applies to your game. You know, that that applies to the way you play. You know, you know, when leaders lead, you know, they they get good things out of it. So. All right, we'll go next to Jared Ramsey. Go ahead, Jared. Jaden, I just wanted to ask about um, Jalen's return. Um, what does it mean? What do you think that'll mean for your game? Um, having another um, speedy receiver and um, for the offense overall. No doubt. Um, yeah, with speedy being back, you know you got to pick your poison. You know we got two. You know we got our guy back, and um, we haven't had him for a while. So you know, um, you know teams haven't like really scouted him as much as they could. You know lately. So, you know, that, that'll be a, a huge contribution to come back with Speedy. So, no doubt it's going to be tough, you know, trying to manage two, you know, of the fastest receivers in the nation, in my opinion. So, it'll be a good one. Next to Kellen Buddy. Jaden was wondering what you got uh, from any takeaways from last night at the Hall of Fame. I know you guys did a lot of activities as a team. So, how special was <laughs> being to visit the Hall of Fame? And Oh, okay. Um, I just thought it was pretty cool, you know, just seeing the guys in my generation that was able to make it. You know, some guys I watched like Devontae Smith, like I look up to him as a receiver and, and I seen him in there, you know. It just it's just an honor, you know, to be able to go there and stuff like that. And I also seen Kim Manny, one of our former uh strength coaches, you know, I look up to Kim, Coach Manny and um he's taught me so much and everything, you know, just to see people like that I know and I'm familiar with. And it was it was a cool experience, really cool experience. Following up with that, how much does that motivate you to succeed not only in this bowl game, but in the rest of your career? No doubt. Um, I don't like to judge myself 
off of other people's success. So, you know, I just, um, you know, I stick to the course. I think everything happens for a reason, you know, and I know I'm going to work my tail off. And, you know, if I end up in there one day, that's because it was meant to be, so. All right, next question from Matt Wenzel. Hey, Jaden, I was wondering uh, if you've made a decision whether uh, that you're going to come back for another year or if this uh, is probably going to be your last game. Uh, don't expect to answer me until after the game. That's all I can tell you, to be honest. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah. overall, as an offense, you guys have obviously made strides this year from some struggles in the past. You know, Do you look at this as an opportunity to kind of I don't know, leave on a good note and make this a season that kind of, you know, define some progress for you guys on that side of the ball. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, we've we got bits and pieces back to the office that we didn't have earlier in the season, as we spoke about before. So, you know, hopefully we can continue to, you know, just build off, you know, what we, we've been doing the rest the whole the entire season. So I'm looking forward to Thursday. Thanks. All right, we've got We've got time to take two more for Jaden. We'll go next to Sam Sklar. Uh, hey, Jaden. Uh, we heard earlier today Jay Johnson sort of talk about how playing in a big dome stadium sort of has to make an adjustment for the players, especially on special teams. And with you being a kick and punt returner, is that something that you've maybe, you know, had to look into these past couple of practices in the stadium? Or is that maybe not, not I don't know. Um. I mean, yeah, you always got to make adjustments to different environments. So no question about that. You know, the coaches, you know, harped on us about, you know, being able to hydrate, eating well. So, you know, no one's cramping up during the game and stuff like that. So, yeah, adjustments did, did have to be made. You know, I got to, you know, take care of these two days and, uh, you know, stay healthy, um, drink water, eat right and everything so I can be ready to go on Thursday. All right, we'll take the last question from Audrey. Go ahead, Audrey. Hey, Jaden, going back to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium stuff, um, you guys were obviously really excited to come play in this game, be at that stadium. What was it like for you when you walked in? Did it live up to your expectations of, uh, you know, kind of being out there on the practice field and just stuff like that? Yeah, it was a great experience, you know, just walking into that stadium. You know, it, it's chills, you know, looking up and then you you, you can see that little thing and you you know, it opened and stuff like that. It was one of the coolest stages I've ever been in. So that dome, I'm looking forward to it Thursday to see the, see it filled up with, with Spartan fans, and I'm ready to go. All right, thanks a lot, Jaden. We appreciate the time. We'll let you go. Appreciate it. You guys have a good one. Yep. All right, next up, I think we're going to get uh, tight end Connor Hayward. Hey, Connor, how are you doing? Can you hear us okay? Yes, sir. I'm doing well. How about yourself? We're great. We're great. All right, let's jump in. Uh, Jonathan, you're my rock. Let's go, buddy. Hey, Connor. Michigan State football brand has grown quite a bit in Georgia. Obviously, really took off with Coach D'Antonio, finding a lot of dudes and developing those. As you have completed quite a journey at Michigan State and being from the metro Atlanta area, how do you see the Spartan football brand growing in Georgia, and how cool is it to be a pretty big part of that? Yeah, um, like you said, Coach Antonio uh, was getting guys, a couple guys per class um, from Georgia before I was get, before I was in school, and you know since I've been in school. But Coach uh, Tucker knows that it, Georgia's a hotbed of you know football, and uh, there's a lot of talent in Georgia. And uh, you know when you look at college football, um, there's always a number of guys on winning teams from Georgia. And I think Coach Tuck, coaching at Georgia, he really understands uh, and knows how the recruiting process works and how how much, how important it is to win guys from Georgia. And, um, you know, I host a lot of kids um, that are committing to Michigan State, just telling, telling them that you'll, you'll be taken care of and everything is, you know, pretty easy. And, you know, just go here, grind. And it's different than being back at home, but it, it's a good change. Next, we'll go to Mark Feather. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Gotcha. All right. Uh, 
Just wanted to ask you about uh, playing in your last game and how big this is and kind of a two part question. Um, just how big this game is your last game, could possibly Xavier's last game, the other seniors out there, you guys coming together. And I've also heard um, your teammates talk about playing this game for you guys and how special is that to you to know that they're out there, uh, given that they're all uh, to send you guys out as winners. Yeah, it, it's it's a big game. It means a lot. Um, obviously, myself and the seniors want to go out in the right way. Uh, you know, I think we've had a pretty successful season, and uh, you know, winning New Year's Six Bowl would make the season that much better. So, um, you know, this is an opportunity of a lifetime for us, um, and uh, we're all just going to seize the moment. Um, you know, Payne Thorne had a really good point earlier after practice. Uh, why not, as a freshman, win a New Year's Six Bowl and start out the right way and, you know, have momentum going next year and for the seniors go out, you know, with a bang. Jerry, you're up next. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Connor, I was just wondering how often you talk to your brother Cam during the season and how much of an inspiration he's been to you, you know, throughout your football career? Yeah, I talk to Cameron probably once a week, uh, like one on one. We're both extremely busy, but in our family group chat and another group chat, which is all my brothers, we we message throughout the day, um, you know, throughout the week as well. Um, and we all under, understand each other's schedule, but um, you know, we're brothers first, and you know that love and you know that connection. Whenever we see each other, you know, it's like we didn't miss a beat. But uh, you know, we're both in season, so we we understand what comes with that, and you know, the seasons are crying. If I could follow up, what what about his game have you adopted to your game, even though you're playing different sides of the ball? Just his motor, you know, being able to, you know, go the whole game without getting tired. And when you do get tired, you're just pushing through. Uh, you know, you see the Steelers are out there with um, a lot of backups right now on the D-line, um, you know, with the injuries and to it being out with his family situation and stuff. But um, just him being a leader as well, just, you know, when things are going good and when things are going bad, just always, you know, looking for that, that next that next play to make a play and, you know, always staying level-headed. Thank you very much. All right, we'll go next to Stephen Brooke. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Connor, I was wondering if you could describe uh, sort of the, the general reaction to Kenneth making the decision he made uh, about his future. And then, uh, you know, just sort of your memories of playing with him this one season and what do you think his legacy is uh, with the program? Who'd you ask about? Kenneth Walker, the decision he made, you know, what was sort of the general reaction from the team? And then uh, your thoughts on maybe sort of his legacy in one season here? I kind of expected it. Uh, you know, running back's one of those positions where you can get hurt on any play and you're, you're taking hits from all different angles. And, uh, you know, he's done a lot for this team. And uh, he had to do a business decision for him, and we all supported it. Um, you know, that happens a lot now nowadays. And guys are doing it for the future. Some guys were playing because they have to, you know, increase their stock or just to put more film out there. But in this case, he's a, he's a top back in the draft. And, uh, you know, right now he just has to take care of his body. Um, you know, he's probably dinged up from the season, get healthy, you know, get ready for combine training, you know, look for that next chapter. You know, I feel like he's supporting us and uh, I feel like he, he's going to miss Michigan State. I honestly feel like he didn't want to leave, but the season he had, you have to leave. Now, what have you seen from those, those rescue running backs over this last month or so? Just them all coming together and you pushing each other uh, to become better every day at practice. Uh, you have Jordan, you got Harold, you got Elijah, Donovan England. Um, I think the room will be fine. Obviously, Ken's a special player, but I think those guys will rally uh, together and get the job done. Thank you. All right, next question from Graham Couch. Hey, Connor. Um, wanted to ask you about Peyton Thorne a little bit and what you've seen from him in terms of development, uh, not just since you've you know been around the program, but I'm, this year specifically, if you can think back to the beginning, that Northwestern game, to sort of who he is as a player and quarterback now. Yeah, he's a he's a poised player. He's a he's a leader. Um, he, he takes control of the offense, and when guys aren't doing what they need to do, you know, he, he's not scared to confront. And we have a, co a head coach like that. Uh, the quarterback kind of follows and falls under that. And um, I think, you know, the competition. And every room has just rise to everybody's level of play. And I, I mean, you guys are seeing the season he has. He doesn't turn the ball over. Um, he, he makes smart decisions. He gets us 
um, align correctly. He gets us in the right calls based on what the defense is calling. And, you know, he, he's a really smart player and a guy that has a, you know, a high ceiling and a high IQ. Appreciate it. All right, we've got uh, time for two more here. Uh, let's go next to Audrey. Go ahead, Audrey. Hey, Connor, I want to go back to the running backs a little bit more specifically Jordan. Obviously, he's from Georgia, one of the five guys on your team from Georgia, including yourself. But um, how much do you think that maybe he's uh, eager to get out there and have a good performance at his home state? And especially, too, with Kenneth not playing, you know, the more carries he may be able to get. Yeah, um, Jordan's one of my closest friends on the team. And uh, he understood his role this year. He had a great back like Ken. Um, Jordan's a young back, but they were still pushing each other to get better every day in practice. And, you know, I think Jordan's uh, more than prepared for this uh, opportunity. And uh, I, I told him, just go out there, do what you need to do. Don't, don't do too much. Just, you know, take those two, three yard runs because those will lead to bigger ones and the home run ones. Um, but you guys have seen he's, he's a solid back. And, uh, you know, he has a bright future. And, you know, playing in your hometown state, I think the adrenaline be pump a little bit more. And, you know, sometimes that's good. Just a quick follow-up. Does he seem to be pretty excited about it, though, to be able to play in his home state? Yeah, um, we were both just talking about uh, how both of our families and friends will be here, uh, the people that haven't really been able to make it up to East Lansing because just due to how far we've been from home. But um, I think, you know, like I said, he's going to be prepared. Um, you know, you guys have seen he's a, he's a solid back, and um, you know he's produced. All right, last question for Connor. We'll go back to Jonathan. Connor, I got a fun one for you. Matt Coglin has been at Michigan State even longer than you have, and a quick review of some Google images show a variety of Coglin hairstyles, facial hair, etc. Do you have a favorite Matt Coglin look? You got pictures, right? Oh yeah, everybody's got pictures. He's had quite a variety. Oh, you oh have a yeah, favorite yeah. book of his. I like I like the hair. I, I think he should trim the beard up a little bit, the beard up a little bit more. But I like the beard. Co Coach Tucker calls him Team Wolf. I like the hair though. Keep it growing. You know, a lot of gingers really don't grow their hair out like that. But I like it. Okay. All right, that's a good one to end on, Connor. We appreciate your time, buddy. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, next up is going to be quarterback Peyton Thorne. All right, Peyton, we're going to jump right in. We'll take our first question from uh, Kellen Buddy. Go ahead, Kellen. Hey, Peyton. Um, just wondering what everything has been like for you guys uh, from the, the activities, the team building experience to going to the football Hall of Fame, the College Football Hall of Fame. How special has all of that been uh, for you guys, and, and how does that maybe kind of help motivate from a, from a team perspective this week? Uh, it's been cool. It's been a good experience down here in Atlanta so far. Uh, like you said, last night we were at the Hall of Fame, and that was cool to to see the different things they had there. And then we played uh, some family feud there last night in a, another game, which was fun. So uh, it's been good stuff. But uh, we're turning our focus now completely to uh, to the game in front of us, and we're excited about that. All right, next up we'll go to Stephen Brooks. Hey, Peyton, I wanted to ask you a couple of things about Kenneth and, and his decision. I know you guys got – pretty close over this last year when he came up. Um, just what was your reaction to him making the decision he made? And how would you describe maybe the, the team-wide reaction to that decision? Um, well, my first reaction was I was a little a little surprised, but not surprised in a bad way. I just, um, we had talked a couple of weeks before, but he, uh, he got some more information after that, after we had talked. And, uh, you know, it's the best decision for him to, uh, to forego the bowl game and, and start training and, and get his body completely healthy and ready to go for the draft. And, uh, you know, none of us on this team hold that against him by any means. Uh, we're in full support of him, and I definitely am as well. 
if I could follow up, you know, what, how would you describe his impact or legacy, I guess, here in one season? And what have you seen from your other running backs over this past month? Yeah, you know, what Ken did this year was uh, was pretty special to win the two awards that he won. Um, and really just, you know, he's a unanimous All-American. Uh, he'll go down as one of our, you know, best players ever, I would say, at Michigan State. Um, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. And uh, so he's uh, he's going to be a really tough guy to replace. But uh, like you said, our guys uh, uh, behind him, um, they're playing well right now. Uh, they're doing what they're supposed to do uh, in terms of our scheme. And, uh, you know, we trust them in, in the run game and pass protection and catch them ball out of the backfield. So uh, it'll be good to, to get those guys on the field and get a lot of reps this week. Thanks, Ben. All right, go next to Graham Couch. Hey, Peyton, I, I'm wondering how much, um, you know, this, this feels like your team differently than it did at the beginning of the year when you were just named the starter, when you started at Northwestern, how much, and, and especially as somebody like a, a Kenneth Walker uh, sort of exits the stage, does this start to feel like your offense and your, your team for a little bit here? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I think that we have a lot of leaders on our team and, um, you know, we got a good group and it's been a fun year and uh, we're looking to close it out the right way. But um, yeah, it definitely feels different than when it did at the start of the year. And I think that's just accumulation of, you know, 12, 12 games, uh, a lot of weeks of preparation, a lot of shared experiences throughout the year. And I think that's what uh, I would attribute that feeling to. When, when you go back and watch film of, of, and I don't know how often you do, of early games in the season, do you see noted progress on what you're seeing and, and, and where you're growing? Yeah, I don't really watch our previous games. Um, you know, this like like I wouldn't watch a Northwestern game right now because it's so uh, so far back in the season. Like I watch every game, obviously, after um, we play. You know, we watched that game a few times. and uh, But in terms of looking back to the start of the year, I don't watch that. And I, I will uh, in the off season or the out of season and, uh, you know, take a look at those things and where I want to improve and kind of, you know, chart my – myself in the areas I can improve. But, uh, you know, right now, that's not something that, that I've done yet. All right, let's go to Alan Cole. Hey, I was just wondering, when you pop the tape in on the pit defense, um, obviously you see a lot. there's a lot of pressure there. They were, I think, second in the country in sacks. What kind of jumps out at you when you look at this defense that you're getting ready to face on Thursday? Yeah, like you said, um, it pops out that they're second in the country in sacks. Uh, they got a lot of good athletes over there. They're really big up front. Um, you know, they do a lot of good things. Uh, third down, they do a lot of different stuff. And, uh, you know, they're very disciplined in what they do. And, uh, you know, they're a good defense. And they've shown that this year. Uh, and obviously they've shown that in the pressure they've got on the quarterback as well. All right, let's go next to Ricardo Cooney. Hey, Peyton. Um, uh, I think a lot of uh, what defined this team this year was character. So can you talk about uh, <clears throat> Jaden and him playing in this game, uh, no matter what his decision is going to be uh, after the game. And then also talk about somebody like a, like a Matt Allen and, and what he brought to the table as far as the character of this team this year. Yeah, I would say both of those guys are great examples of, you know, what it means to play for this team. And, uh, you know, for Jaden, you know, he's pushed through injuries this year, um, although none major, knock on wood. Um, you know, he's been in and out in terms of practice. And, you know, you see him fighting every day and he's trying to get back. And, you know, not that he's been out for an extended period of time or anything like that, but, um, you know, he works hard every day. And then Matt Allen, uh, you know, has given everything that he's got to this program. Um, obviously, you know, both his brothers played for us as well. And, uh, you know, he's kind of carried on that legacy and his brothers have played in, you know, some of the biggest games in Michigan State history. And, uh, you know, he's got a ton of experience under his belt and he's uh, he's been great for us this year. All right, let's go back to Matt Wenzel. Hey, Peyton, I was wondering, uh, you know, with the progress you guys have made offensively after struggles in recent seasons, how you view this game and the opportunity to, to close on, on, a, on a positive note and kind of make this a season of defining progress for you guys on the side of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. You know, looking to close uh, the year out the right way, 
and send our seniors out the right way as well. And then also gain momentum moving into next year, you know. Um, I think that we have shown a lot of progress uh, from last year to this year and really from the last few years, honestly, offensively. And, uh, you know, we're looking to build on that uh, this week on Thursday and, uh, you know, finish the year out the right way. And then we'll be able to take a look at the season in full, um, you know, in the weeks coming and look at areas we can improve for next year and, uh, you know, what kind of players we got coming back for next year. Thanks. Jared Ramsey, you're up. Um, my question kind of builds on Matt's. Um, Connor uh, was just in here saying that you gave a speech after practice about um, to the freshmen about the importance of the bowl games and sending out the seniors the right way. Can you just talk a little bit about um, what bowl games mean to a program and um, for the coming years? Yeah, after practice today, you know, we uh, we talked a little bit as a team, and um, you know, I just said that. You know, a bowl game like this, you know, it doesn't come around, you know, every single year. Not everybody can say that they play in a bowl game like this. And uh, uh, to win a bowl game like this is something you can take with you, you know, and, and build on. You know, we're not satisfied with just getting here. We're not satisfied with just winning this in terms of down the road. But um, to send a, your seniors out the right way, win a New Year's Six Bowl, um, and then I, I was saying to start a, a freshman's legacy. You know, he's got that on his resume. Um, when, when you accomplish that. So, um, you know, bowl games do matter, although people may think they don't um, with the, you know, the playoff. Um, now they still do. And I think that our team is motivated and, uh, you know, we're looking to finish our year out the right way and, uh, you know, get rolling into next year on a positive note. All right, let's go back to Jonathan. Hey, Peyton. Things went pretty well for you in your first game at Penn State. That was a long time ago. A lot of things have gone really well for the offense since. We're here on Zoom. How do you keep your focus on what has to be focused on as things start going well, people start patting you on the back, numbers start rising? How do you keep that focus and reset it each week? Yeah, I would say you really can't get satisfied with, you know, any success that you have. Uh, you look at the greats. Um, you know, I think of Tom Brady immediately with all the success that he's had. And, you know, he always says that his favorite ring is the next. And I'm not saying that we've won any rings or accomplished anything like Tom Brady has, but, um, you know, he's always motivated, and that's why he's the greatest, you know. And uh, I think of, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, same thing. And those are the greats and those who you want to look at and you want to learn from those type of people. And, uh, you know, when you look at us, uh, there's always stuff to improve when you watch the film. You go back and watch the film, and it, it may look like, oh, it was a really good offensive day, but you look back on it and you say, man, we could have scored at least two more times, you know, and it's frustrating. And there's always um, areas to improve uh, as a unit, as a team, and personally, you know. And uh, for me, you know, I'm always trying to improve, and I feel like there are a ton of areas for me to improve as a player. And, um, you know, as we as we go to the offseason, I know our offense is going to look and say, man, we have a lot of areas that we can improve still and uh, and keep building because you always want to be going, uh, you know, upwards and not stagnant or going down. So uh, we'll be looking to get better this offseason. All right, we're going to take two more for Peyton. We'll go next to Audrey. Hey, Peyton. Jay Johnson told us this morning that you guys are getting Jalen Naylor back. Uh, this is probably something that you have known for – quite some time, but um, how important is it to be able to have uh, one of those big weapons offensively back for you guys in a game like this? Yeah, it'll be great to have him back. Um, you know, having him back provides another element of, um, you know, big play possibility. Not that our other guys didn't, because there are, we have other guys that are fast as well, but, you know, Speedy has a lot of uh, experience under his belt. You know, he's a really good route runner, has good hands, and he's just a good player. So uh, having another guy, another playmaker out there um, back is going to be nice. And, uh, you know, I know he's ready to go, and he's excited to get back out there. All right, last question for Peyton is going to come from Stephen Brooks. Go ahead, Stephen. Thank you. Hey, Peyton, this just came to me. I don't. Maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but 2019 – you would have been on the scout team playing your starting defense. That was Coach D'Antonio's defense, obviously similar to Coach Narduzzi's. Anyway, when you look at Pitt, uh, what I'm getting at is, uh, do you see some flashbacks to your first season here at Michigan State and the defense you were playing against in practice at all? Yeah, I do. And it's funny you say that. I remember, you know, watching the film and 
listening to uh, a couple of our coaches talk who were on the previous staff, and it did remind me of my freshman year. You know, I played against that the whole year, and um, you know, I played with Jaden as well on that scout team. So I do remember that, and uh, you know, it was fun to go against our defense every day. You know, we had a really good defense that year, and uh, um, yeah, those are experiences I'll remember and, and have in my back pocket. Thank you. All right, Peyton, th thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Have a good rest of your day. All right, obviously we'll close out the Michigan State player session with center Matt Allen. Hey man, how you doing? Good. How about yourself? We're we're ready to go. Let's uh, let's get rolling. We'll go back to Jonathan again. Hey Matt, we've been talking about the Allen brothers on Michigan State offensive lines for like ten plus years now. I want to ask you how important wrestling was to your background and development as a player, and if you can settle once and for all, which of the Allen brothers was the best wrestler? <laughs> I think uh, wrestling has definitely played a huge part in um, literally every single asset of when it comes to football, especially when you're playing offensive line or defensive line, just being able to like tell which way guys are moving just by like pressing them out or like certain blocks like become a little bit easier just because you've been in that position so many times from wrestling and the other, other situations like that. But if I had to say, who was best, I'd probably say myself, but if you ask Brian, he would say himself, and if you ask Jack, he would say himself, so it's a little difficult to tell, but I'd say me. All right, Graham, you're up next. I wanted to ask you a little bit about Peyton and what you've seen from him uh, that maybe we don't as the season's gone along from who he was as a quarterback, player, guy in the huddle, at Northwestern to who he's become now. What, what, what differences do you see and what, what, what can you kind of share about that? Uh, I would say the main differences are just his leadership. I mean, I know that Peyton, I watched Peyton in high school because he went to Naperville Central, so I knew he could play from the time he committed here, but definitely his leadership. He's just stepped up in every asset of that, whether it's on the field or off the field, he always is trying to come up to the O-line on the sidelines and at practice, and he's just a very good vocal leader and a very good leader by just talking the talk and walking the walk. And he uh, he really cares about this team and every player that's on it, and that's one thing that I really love about him, and he's a really great guy, and I'm glad that we have him with us. All right, let's go next to Mark Feather. Go ahead, Mark. There we go. Um, Peyton was talking about uh, the why not? Why not this team finish out on a New Year's Day bowl? Um, you know, uh, the seniors going out the right way and building something for the future. What are your thoughts of what was behind that message that he delivered? Uh, I would say the main thing behind that is really my goal when I came here was just to leave my jersey in a better place than where I started. And, you know, hopefully I think I've done that, but I just want to be able to help the younger guys and help the guys that are coming in as much as they possibly can so that when their time does come, they don't skip a beat and they're ready to go right away. And I think also by like like what I said, leaving my jersey in a better place helps, helps uh, start a good stepping stone for the next upcoming season. And I, uh, I have a lot of confidence in this team, a lot of confidence in Coach Tucker and his staff, and I know they're going to do great things in the future. All right, next up is going to be Sam Sklar. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Matt. Um, when you look at Pitt's defense, they do a pretty good job of 
generating pass rush and getting to the quarterback, but maybe don't necessarily have a superstar player like an Aiden Hutchinson sort of guy that you faced earlier in the season. So what do they maybe do from like an X's and O's standpoint or have any creative ways to sort of generate such a good pass rush? Uh, I think they have a lot of good just like twist games as well as just trying to create disruption and penetration upfield. I mean, they may not have like big name guys like Aiden Hutchinson, but I think they have a lot of really good players on their defense as well as on the rest of their team. And it's going to be a good challenge for us, but I'm excited for the challenge and I'm excited for what they're going to bring for us and hopefully our preparation will help handle it. Next up is Kellen Buddy. Go ahead, Kellen. Hey, Matt, you talked about, you know, leaving your jersey in a good spot when you leave. You're talking about the team building and how special this team is for you. What was it like kind of leading up to, to the game itself with the events in the Hall of Fame and uh, just kind of wrapping everything up this season? Uh, you know, it's been pretty surreal for me. I mean, I've like I said, when I was a little kid, like all I ever wanted to do was have the opportunity to come here. And now that I'm basically almost out the door after this weekend, I've really just been trying to take everything in and not take any moment for granted with my teammates or just even on the practice field or in the weight room, just cherishing every moment while I still have it before I'm gone. We're going to take three more. We'll go next to Ricardo. Hey, uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about, I guess, this extra year that you got and, and what it's meant to you? I mean, I think I remember you saying in spring ball that, you know, you didn't know if you'd be welcome back or you could come back. And now that you've got that second opportunity and you're going to be in a bowl game, a New Year's Six bowl game like this, talk about what this year has meant to you and, and uh, just, just being able to participate. Uh, you know, it's just been very surreal. I mean, when I asked Coach Tucker to have the opportunity to come back for one more year, he uh, said I'd be able to. And from that point on, I just started working every day as hard as I could to be ready to be in a position to play and help contribute to the team this year. And, you know, there's been a lot of special moments throughout this entire season, whether that's beating Michigan or going down to – places like Miami and beating them at their place, which was a pretty cool moment as well. Just being able to go out with a winning record and how we've always wanted to do things here is a very good thing. And I've been very blessed and excited to have the opportunity to be a part of this team. And I'm just ready to take on one last challenge against Pitt this Thursday. Next up, we'll go to Steven. Matt, uh, you've been around a while, so I wanted to ask you, just from your perspective, uh, what was it like blocking for Kenneth Walker with his style of running and, and the things he was able to do? And when he was doing some of those special highlight reel type of things, did you always know in the moment or how often would you sort of notice on film that maybe something was, was sort of extraordinary? Uh, I mean, I noticed from the second he got here in spring ball that he was a really special kid. And, you know, what I love about Ken is that He's an even better person than he is a football player, which uh, is usually hard to come by when you're that good. But he really is a great person. And I was very blessed and excited to have the opportunity to block for him this year. And there was some really just cool moments on the field, like where usually you'd feel like the running back was about to get tackled. And then he'd break it for another 30 yards and score a touchdown. And that just brought a lot of, lot of excitement and, uh, into the games and into my life. And, I was uh, very blessed to have the opportunity to know Ken and uh, play for him and help him achieve his goals this year. Thank you. Jonathan, you've got the last one to wrap us up. Okay, something fun, Matt, on the way out. Matt Coglin got here in 2016 also. Coglin has featured a wide variety of hairstyles, hair lengths, facial hair. When you look at that, you've seen it all. Do you have a favorite Coglin hairstyle? <sighs> Uh, I kind of like what Cogs is doing right now. I mean, when you look at uh, pictures of him from when he was a freshman, it's almost like difficult to even realize that's him. But I kind of like what he's got going on right now with the long hair and the beard. It's pretty nice. He's got a lot of a lot of good ones. So.
All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Matt, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. We'll let you get back to work. Right, thank That'll you. close out our Michigan State player session. Appreciate everybody's time. Great job over the last couple of days. Uh, we, we've been really impressed with this group of, of media. You guys are doing a great job, uh, and we, we appreciate it. Uh, if there's anything we can do to help, please let us know. And we hope to see you uh, down in the hospitality room. That's it. Thanks, guys. Hey, Matt, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tomorrow's uh, coaches, is that virtual or is that in person? No, unfortunately, it's got to be virtual again, but uh, we will have them both together in the same uh, in the same Zoom. Uh, but, it, yeah, it will be virtual, Jerry. We'll have them both together tomorrow morning. Hey, Matt, thank you. Yes, sir.